Welcome to Antibody Basics by BioIndron, Part 1. Here, we'll give an introduction on monoclonal, polyclonal, and recombinant antibodies. What are antibodies, also known as immunoglobulins? They are Y-shaped proteins produced by the immune system to identify and neutralize foreign objects like bacteria and viruses. They recognize a unique molecule of the foreign object, called an antigen, via the antibody's variable region. When an antibody binds to an antigen, it triggers other parts of the immune system to eliminate that antigen. Here, we see a diagram of an immunoglobulin, IgG. It is made up of four polypeptide chains, comprising two identical light chains and heavy chains. The heavy chains are linked to each other by disulfide bonds, and each heavy chain is also linked to a light chain by a disulfide bond. The antibody has two identical antigen binding sites, giving it the ability to bind simultaneously to two structures. Antibodies are classified into five isotypes, IgG, IgA, IgD, IgE, and IgM, based on the constant domains in their H chains, which give each isotype their different characteristics. They can be further classified into subtypes. IgG is the most abundant class, being present in the largest amounts in blood and tissue fluids. They have high neutralization and opsonization activities, and can cross the placenta into the fetus. IgM is typically present as the antigen receptor on the B-cell surface. It is the first antibody produced by the adaptive immune system in response to a foreign pathogen. IgA is found in body secretions such as tears, saliva, respiratory and intestinal secretions, and colostrum. This protects against pathogens by tagging them from destruction. IgD activates basophils and mast cells to produce antimicrobial factors. They may play a part in determining if antigens activate B cells. Finally, we have IgE, which mediates allergic reactions and has antiparasitic activity. Because of their role in the body's immune system, antibodies are highly valuable in research and therapeutics. Antibodies are essential research tools being involved with ELISA testing, Western blots, immunofluorescence, flow cytometry, immunoprecipitation, and many more. As a therapy, antibodies can be used to treat numerous diseases by utilizing their specificity and affinity in targeting specific molecules. The most common antibody drug type is the monoclonal antibody. Now, you may be wondering, what are monoclonal antibodies? To answer that question, there are a few different types of antibodies you should understand. Polyclonal antibodies were first used for research in the early to mid-20th century, after the discovery of serum antibodies in the late 19th century. Subsequently, the development of monoclonal antibodies in 1975 became a major research breakthrough, as it allowed for the production of highly specific antibodies with known binding characteristics. The main difference between polyclonal and monoclonal antibodies are that polyclonal antibodies are produced by different B lymphocytes and recognize different epitopes of a single antigen. Meanwhile, monoclonal antibodies are produced by identical B lymphocytes, which are clones of a single parent cell. Polyclonal antibodies can be generated in large quantities and rapidly, within several months of initiating immunizations and at a lower cost than monoclonal antibodies. What they can't do, however, is be produced at a constant and renewable resource once the desired hybridoma has been generated. Another main difference between polyclonal antibodies and monoclonal antibodies are that polyclonal antibodies are heterogeneous. Any structural changes on one epitope are unlikely to significantly affect binding and polyclonal antibodies are more stable over a broad pH and salt concentration. On the other hand, monoclonal antibodies are homogeneous. They have high specificity and affinity. They are particularly useful in analyzing changes in molecular conformation, protein-protein interactions, phosphorylation states, and identifying single members of protein families. Polyclonal antibody production starts with antigen preparation. Depending on the application, the target antigen will be a purified protein, peptide, or protein mixture. The second step is to immunize the animals, for example rabbits, mice, or goats, with the antigen of interest. Booster immunizations are then administered to enhance the immune response, activating B cells. In the third step, we collect their serum and process it. Animals are allowed time to mount a robust immune response. Blood is collected to obtain serum samples when antibody titers are sufficiently high. 
The fourth step is purification, where purification techniques are used to concentrate and isolate the antibodies of interest. Common methods include protein A or protein G affinity purification. Finally, we have antibody characterization. The purified polyclonal antibodies are characterized to assess their specificity and binding properties, which may take several days of testing. There are three common methods to produce monoclonal antibodies. The first is hybridomas. After animal immunization with a specific antigen of interest, spleen cells are harvested to obtain B cells. Hybridoma cell lines are created by having those antibody-producing B cells fused with immortalized myeloma cells. Monoclonal antibody-producing hybridoma cells are then screened for the specific binding and activity against the target antigen. This step may take several rounds to identify the most suitable clones. Second, we have single B cell technologies. After animal immunization with a specific antigen of interest, antibody secreting cells are harvested from spleen and bone marrow. Different platforms exist for single B cell sorting, including nanowell, nanovial, and microfluidics based methods. A microfluidic based method involves protein binding and or cell based binding to detect and sort positive micro droplets. Single cell sequencing is then performed. Next, we have phage display. By genetically engineering the bacteriophages coat protein, a fragment sequence can be linked to the phage DNA, enabling the displayed antibody fragment to be encoded by the viral genome. These phage display libraries screen the phage particles to identify antibodies that bind to specific target antigens in a process called panning. Following monoclonal antibodies, the next generation of antibodies became recombinant antibodies. These are engineered antibodies generated in vitro. Unlike traditional antibodies made by the immune system, recombinant antibodies are generated from a synthetic gene to target specific molecules such as those found on the surface of cancer cells. One of the main advantages of recombinant antibodies is their ability to be produced on a large scale, making them useful in the development of diagnostic tools and therapeutic drugs. The first step to produce these antibodies is design and cloning. The antibody gene sequence is cloned into an expression vector. Second is transfection. Host cells, such as mammalian cells, are transfected. Host cells will produce the recombinant antibody. Third, transfected cells are cultivated in a bioreactor or cell culture and monitored for cell growth and antibody expression. Fourth, the cell culture supernatant or lysate containing recombinant antibodies are harvested for purification to isolate the desired antibody. And finally, the purified antibodies are analyzed to confirm identity, functionality, antibody specificity, and binding properties. BioIntron focuses on antibody discovery, expression, and optimization. Our main feature is antibody expression with gene sequence to purified antibodies in just two weeks. BioIntron's high throughput platform enables the rapid expression of recombinant antibodies in HEK or CHO cells. We guarantee the delivery of 100 micrograms to 100 grams of recombinant antibodies and no antibody means no cost. We also have a VHH antibody library generation service in which BioIntron is a well-recognized leader in the space. With our self-owned alpaca breeding farm, we offer a one alpaca for one project commitment and we guarantee the delivery of over 20 unique binders, high diversity and large capacity. We also have a wide variety of other services, including bispecific antibodies, a few costellated antibodies, single B-cell screening, hybridoma sequencing, antibody optimization, recombinant protein expression in the mammalian system, and choke one stable cell lines. Thank you for watching and comment with any questions or topics you'd like us to cover next. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. In the next episode, we'll focus on the different types of next-generation antibody formats scientists use.